Well, you better not let that letter get to the sheriff, you chicken shit, or I'll fuck you up bad. You're asking a lot there, pal. I'll try. Well, you better try, you fuckface. I'm taking off. Let's talk about episode 10, part 10 of Twin Peaks The Return. I've been falling behind a little bit. Um, weakest episode for me by far. I uh, still enjoyed it, there's some good parts to it, but this one just... Uh, mm, didn't really get much out of this one. Everything's been building up really nicely and this one just kind of plateaus really. I mean, stuff's developed but not enough uh, to really make it an engaging and exciting episode. I thought the, um, the thing with... Uh, Nadine running the run silent run drape shop was a little bit on the nose. Um, Richard Horn is probably the the focal point of this episode, really. Uh, the the guy who was you know not really convincing me with his acting in the earlier episodes turns out to be the grandson of Richard and Sylvia Horn. I can only assume Audrey is his mother. So where the hell is she, and why isn't she sorting out her piece of shit son? Um, but the thing for me with Richard Horn is that he's he's the new Leo in terms of um, he looks the part, but he can't act the part for me. Uh, and me, and I, I again, much like with Leo in the original series, I don't know whether it's down to the writing or the actor, but it just doesn't really work. Uh, he does a lot of despicable things in this episode. He uh, he kills that woman in the in the the trailer, uh, which is pretty you know heavy. And then he goes and, you know, chokes his grandmother out, you know, calls her all sorts of stuff, cunt, and things I, things I wouldn't even say more than cunt, you know, just like, I just, didn't, I just didn't buy it. He barges in, he assaults his grandmother, steals all her money, and I just felt nothing because it was just so extreme, so unbelievable. This guy is such a, a caricature. I just, I don't, he's such a nothing character to me, and it seems like he's going to be a pivotal part of the show, but... I just don't believe the character whatsoever. Uh, and again, I don't know if it's the acting or whether it's the writing. I mean, some of it has to be the writing because putting a character in that position without knowing anything else about him, uh, you don't know why he is the way he is. Maybe there'll be a big revelation at the end and we'll, we'll realize why he is the despicable personification of evil that he is. But somehow, I, I can't imagine anything justifying it. Um, it just seems far too extreme for me. Uh, so I just didn't buy it. Um, we got some stuff with uh, Cooper, Dougie, uh, with uh, his wife Janie kind of realizing that uh, Dougie had lost a lot of weight and so they have sex and kind of a funny scene with his hands flopping up and down and stuff and a big smile on his face afterwards. Um, we get kind of the backstory that there's someone's out to get Dougie, uh, you, know, you know, Cooper, Dougie. They're out to get Dougie Jones and so they get um, Tom Sizemore's character involved in going to the casino from one of the first episodes, and we get the, the Mitchum brothers, I believe they're called, um, Robert Nepper and uh, James Belushi, and we had a lot of them in this episode, and again, Belushi, uh, not not the, the better of the Belushi brothers, I think, when it comes to acting, um, it was fine, I guess, but a little, little caricature again, and then the whole thing with the, 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 the kind of the, uh, the assistant candy, like, when she hit Robert Nepper in the face, I just, like, what kind of idiot would do that? I, I, I just didn't buy it. And then again, this long, drawn-out, you know, hey, Candy, do this. And she just ignored it. It just felt like it was padding. It really felt like it was padding. Uh, at no point did I feel, like, really bored or, like, impatient, but I just knew that this wasn't good stuff, you know, um, for me anyway. And so the seeds have been planted that the, the, the Mitchum brothers are going to try and get Dougie Jones. So Cooper's in danger. Um, we had another conversation between the log lady and, uh, well not a conversation, it was just her telling uh, Hawk some stuff over the phone and him kind of nodding intently. I didn't really get much out of it, but uh, she talks about the Truman brothers and, uh, and stuff like that. So yeah, ultimately n nothing really progressed too much in this episode. It felt like a filler episode to me. Very weird scene with Gordon Cole in his hotel room and he opens the door and there's this, uh, very standard deaf <laughs> vision <laughs> of Laura Palmer, and I don't get that either because he was never really involved with. Well, I guess you know uh, Cooper wasn't either, but it just you know I mean it's intriguing. I'm wondering if it'll lead anywhere, but it was just a bit of an odd one. Um, 
so yeah, overall there's, there's not much to talk about with this episode I don't think. We had another snippet of um, the guy with the moustache and the ginger hair and, uh, and the girlfriend who I think is um, uh, Shelley's daughter. Uh, and again, it seems to be in this, uh, this cycle of abuse that her mother was. Um, and again, that guy's acting just... I don't know what it is. Uh, I feel like when you're being that kind of a ruthless, vicious character, there's some kind of fine line to get it right and make it believable. And, and him and the guy who plays Richard Horn, they aren't cutting it for me. I, I'm not really buying it too, it's too much. Got a bit of Harry Dean Stanton playing the guitar, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, anything else really? Uh, I mean, obviously we had the, the, another scene with Dr. Jacoby, or well, just Jacoby now, I don't know what he's, what he's up to really, apart from doing these crazy online videos, and Nadine is very taken with him, thinks he's beautiful, obviously she's no longer with Ed, which makes sense, uh, we haven't seen Ed yet, I know he's in the show, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that, I'm looking forward to seeing Audrey, and how she ties into how much of a absolute cunt her son is, uh, I'm assuming it's her son, I mean, who else could it, who, who else could it be, I mean, it's only Audrey, I mean, and that's Johnny, uh, which I, I don't buy either, so uh, it has to be Audrey's son, and how does she play into everything? I don't know. That's it. Uh, yeah, quite an uneventful one. Uh, I'm eager to keep going. I, I, I'm hearing that episode 14 is a big one, so on we go, and uh, let's just get cracking, because I, I just want to get to the next episode, because that one just didn't quite cut it for me. It wasn't bad, it just was easily the least memorable, and... Uh, probably the worst episode, even though, again, I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed being in that world. And uh, We had a scene with Cole and uh, uh, Albert talking about the text message that Diane received uh, the day that um, Bad Cooper escaped. And so they, they now are aware that she has some sort of connection with him. And also, uh, Tammy came in with um, a screenshot from one of the SD cards from the New York uh, glass box experiment, and it had Bad Cooper inside the box. So... I'm glad that that's being brought back to, and that we're going back to that that element, and uh, and now you know, I think Gordon's like something's not right about this at all. You know, it's just like yeah. Uh, hopefully, more answers are coming, and uh, I'll leave it there. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Apart from the fact he throws cans and call it into a tree. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Not quite as cool as you, cause... <laughs>